this session we will be discussing about the last portion of your electrochemistry that is application one of the important application of electrochemistry that is your commercial cells or batteries. First let us see what is this commercial cells or batteries as we have come across in your daily life the batteries which we use in our daily life all those come under these commercial cells or batteries. Uh, the batteries which you use in your wall clocks, your toys etc, your cameras, your wrist watches etc all those come under these electrochemical cells that is nothing but your batteries. As we all know these commercial cells they are nothing but your electrochemical cells. These are nothing but your electrochemical cells. That is nothing but they utilize chemical energy, they produce some chemical energy and they convert this chemical energy into electrical energy. That is these are the cells or batteries inside which there is a chemical reaction happening which produce some chemical energy and it is converted into your electrical energy which is utilized by the respective things which we have been using. So, electrical uh, electrochemical cells are nothing but your commercial cells. If this electrochemical cell due to its large size and uh, electrolyte liquid electrolyte there are many drawbacks in using these electrochemical cells as batteries. That is because batteries means as you have all seen the batteries are very compact the electrolyte is non spilling in that easy to use. So, as a result you have to make this electrochemical cell usable which is nothing but your batteries. So, converting this electrochemical cell into an usable thing that is into a, a, a cell in, into a battery by making all these features that is compactness easily usable and uh, voltage amount of voltage that has been produced. So, all these things applying into your electrochemical cell you get your batteries. So, simply calling the electrochemical cells that is having a modification in that what is that modification? You connect this electrochemical cells, number of electrochemical cells in series by providing three main things that is easy usage, compactibility and it is of non-spilling electrolyte. So, if the electrolyte is non-spilling, you will make the electrolyte non-spilling. Applying these three factors, if you make a battery, if you make a, uh, a setup that is called as your battery. So, electrochemical cell connect n number of these cells connected in series in series by having three major qualities one is compactness easy usage non spilling electrolytes electrolyte. So, by connecting these electrochemical series uh, cells in series very important and having these three characteristics for this setup you call these as your batteries. You call this as your batteries. So, what are batteries? Batteries are nothing but simple electrochemical cells which are connected in series having compactness, easy usage as well as non-spilling electrolyte gives you the definition for your batteries. So, these are your batteries. So, after making the desired modifications for your electrochemical cells and making them connect in series, you get your batteries. So, these batteries that have been produced from your electrochemical cells are of three types. These batteries are of three types. Three types. The first one is your primary batteries. Primary batteries. What are your primary batteries? Primary batteries are those which are electrochemical cells. They have some electrochemical uh, energy produced which is converted into electrical energy itself. But this chemical reaction happening inside this primary battery is a re irreversible reaction. That is once a chemical reaction has happened, chemical energy is produced, it is converted into electrical energy, the battery is finished. That is you cannot reverse it. Hence, these are the batteries which cannot be reusable. Once the reaction happens, the reaction is completed, there is no more chemical energy that can be produced by these batteries. 
Hence, there is no more electrical energy produced by this battery. Simply telling these are your use and throw batteries. Once used, you have to throw it. So, hence, these are the batteries that is non-rechargeable. Non-rechargeable. Non-rechargeable batteries. That is, the chemical reactions, chemical reactions takes place takes place irreversibly irreversibly that is once chemical energy produced chemical energy produced and converted into electrical energy electrical energy the reverse cannot be done cannot be done. Simply calling it as use and throw batteries. Example, your dry cell. Dry cell. These are the cells which you use in your wall clocks, the big cells which you use. So, uh, 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 cylindrical shaped cells, those are your dry cells which is also called as Leclanchy cell. Then, uh, mercury cells mercury cells these are your cells which is used in your wrist watches the small oval shape thing which we use in your wrist watches the small things those are your mercury cells the second type of cells batteries the second type of batteries are your secondary batteries secondary batteries batteries the same thing these are your electrochemical cells that produce chemical energy by happening a chemical reaction inside it converts into electrical energy but the difference here it is once the reaction is happened chemical energy is produced it is converted into electrical energy you can reverse the reaction that is by providing some electrical energy you can convert that is you can reverse the chemical reaction hence again it is reusable that is these are your rechargeable batteries once used do need not throw it, recharge it, again use it. A very good example is your mobile batteries. That is your lithium ion batteries that is present in your mobile. That is nothing but once you recharge it, you once you uh, charge it with your electricity, the chemical reaction is ready to happen. Reaction happens, electrical energy is produced. Once the battery is dead, again you plug in into your recharge thing. So hence again this charged, hence you will be reusing. Such type of batteries are called as your secondary batteries. So secondary batteries are rechargeable batteries rechargeable batteries that is the chemical energy converted into electrical energy electrical energy Again, by pro providing electrical energy, you can get back your chemical energy. That is, they are interconvertible. Again, chemical energy is utilized to convert into electrical energy. Again, electricity is passed to get the backward thing. So, I can tell it as the of forward reaction is electrochemical reaction. The backward reaction is electrolytic reaction. That is, you are providing some electricity to make the reaction happen. Hence, the reaction again happens to give you the electrical energy. So, the forward reaction is electrochemical reaction. You convert chemical energy into electrical energy. The backward reaction is electrical energy to chemical energy is your electrolytic concept wherein you get back your chemical reaction happen. That is the chemical reaction is a reversible reaction. Reversible reaction. So, you take your reactants, react it to get your products, you get your chemical energy, you convert into electrical energy. Again, you provide some electrical energy to the reaction, products get converted into reactants, again the battery is ready to have a chemical reaction to get your electrical energy. So, reactants to products, you get your electrical energy, energy backward product to reactant you get your chemical energy energy 
get back your chemical energy. Again, it is reversed. Again, you get your electrical energy. A simple exam uh, example, as I have told you, it's your mobile batteries. Reactions happen inside the battery. You get your electrical energy. Once the battery is dead, you plug in your charger. Again, it is charged. Reaction reverses. Again, you go on using your mobile. Again, the reaction happens and produces your electricity. Vice versa, you'll be doing every uh, now and then. So that's nothing but your secondary batteries. Example, as I have told you, lithium ion batteries, battery that is used in your mobiles. So lithium ion batteries in your mobiles, nickel cadmium batteries and nickel cadmium batteries are used in cameras, camera cells. Solar rechargeable solar batteries are nothing but your nickel cadmium batteries. Then uh, lead sulfuric acid battery that is used in your automobiles. The third type of cells are fuel cells. Fuel cells. Third type of cells are fuel cells. So what are these fuel cells? As the name itself cells tells, these are the cells or batteries which produce electrical energy through some combustion of some fuel. Such batteries are called as your fuel cells. So as, uh, as the name itself tells, fuel cells. So these are the cells which produce electrical energy, electrical energy through combustion reaction. As you all know, combustion is a reaction. That is, you are uh, uh, reacting a substance, combustible substance with oxygen to produce the products. So, through combustion reaction of some fuels like uh, methane, carbon monoxide, uh, carbon, etc. So, these are your combustible substances that is being combusted to produce your electrical energy in such cells, such cells which use this combustion reaction of these substances to produce electrical energy, to produce electrical energy are called as fuel cells. As the name itself tells, fuel cells, fuel combust to give you some energy that is being converted into electrical energy. So such cells are called as fuel cells. So we have taken the dry cell. Leclanche cell that's a primary battery. We are starting with your primary batteries. What are primary batteries? These are non-rechargeable batteries. Once used, you have to throw it out. That is the chemical reaction happening inside. Once the reaction happens, it is irreversible reactions. So dry cell, which is also called as Leclanche cell, it is named after the scientists who have found this uh, primary battery. So dry cell, dry because it doesn't have a liquid electrolyte inside. You have a semi-solid electrolyte inside. So I'll be telling what is that electrolyte. So hence it's called as dry cell. It doesn't have a liquid electrolyte inside. That means you are dry cell. Looking at the picture of this dry cell, this is your picture, pictorial representation of your uh, dry cell. So the dry cell has a large zinc container. This is your zinc container. The walls, inner walls of the zinc container acts as your anode. The inner walls of your zinc container acts as your anode. Into this container, we have taken a, a, a graphite rod, a graphite rod which acts as your cathode. This graphite rod is dipped in an electrolytic solution which is a mixture of carbon powder, manganese oxide, ammonium chloride and zinc chloride. Along with that, you will also add a starch into it which makes your liquid electrolyte into a semi-solid electrolyte. Hence, along with this, you will be adding starch and making it a paste. So, this paste is put inside this one into which you have dipped your graphite rod. Among these three things, carbon powder, manganese oxide, ammonium chloride and zinc chloride. Ammonium chloride acts as your electrolyte. I will tell you what is the role of manganese oxide also. Here the two important roles is ammonium chloride acts as electrolyte, manganese oxide I will be telling you further. So this mixture uh, into which your graphite rod has been dipped. This paste that we have taken, this paste, electrolytic paste is been surrounded by a porous paper which separates your uh, cathode from anode. So this uh, paper, porous paper I have written here. Porous paper is nothing but a paper which has lot of pores. It separates your cathode from anode. Along with that, porous paper acts as a salt bridge inside this battery. It acts as a salt bridge inside this battery. 
the whole setup is sealed down and the graphite rod has a brass cap so you know brass is a very good conductor of electricity hence the graphite rod has been plugged in by a brass cap if you observe your cylindrical batteries that you uh, take it for your home for your clocks you can see that it has a cap on it that, that's, uh, that is nothing but your brass cap brass because it's a very good conductor of electricity so now this is the setup so cathode is your graphite rod around which you have a paste of electrolyte these are your contents of your electrolyte which has been surrounded which has been enclosed in a large zinc container the walls of the zinc container acts as anode the whole setup has been sealed then the cathode that is your graphite rod bean has been inserted with the brass cap the brass cap acts as a good con good conductor of electricity the emf of the cell is 1.5 volts you can observe the batteries on the batteries itself it will be written the voltage is 1.5 volts that is this whole battery along its lifetime it can produce a constant electric current of 1.5 volts so its its total capacity along its lifetime is 1.5 volts it's con it's constantly pro produces 1.5 volt of energy now what are the chemical reactions happening let us see at anode and cathode at anode as i have so told you zinc container itself acts as your anode the zinc the inner walls of the zinc itself undergoes oxidation like this zinc itself undergoes oxidation zinc ions move from your anodic uh substance that is anodic substance to your electrolytic solution since the porous paper is present zinc ions can easily move into your electrolytic uh solution the two electrons that is present that has been produced from your zinc moves towards your cathode it moves from anode that is zinc container so uh, it will move from your anode to cathode cathode is your graphite rod so cathode is your graphite rod so the graphite rod along this graphite rod you have your electrolyte ammonium chloride ammonium chloride so cathode cations will be moving towards your cathode which is the cation in ammonium chloride so ammonium ions nh4 plus ions plus ions these are your cations you can observe here cations moving towards your cathode the electrons that is coming from anode is accepted by this ammonium ions so zinc loses electrons two electrons these two electrons are accepted by ammonium ions where are these ammonium ions present this is present in your electrolytic solution while chloride ions remain outwards here that is because chloride ions are n ions they move towards your anode they lose electrons to, uh, to your anode so zinc ions which give you electrons will come to your cathode here cathode here near cathode ammonium ions accept your electrons you can observe here ammonium ions are accepting electrons as a result they produce two products one is ammonia one is ammonia along with that you will be having a production of hydrogen gas there will be a production of hydrogen gas now the role of manganese oxide comes into picture that is manganese oxide oxidizes your hydrogen gas that has been produced by this reaction by this reaction that is produced by this reaction that is the reduction of ammonium ions produce two products ammonia and hydro hydrogen gas this hydrogen gas has been oxidized into water by mno2 so the role of mno2 manganese oxide here it is oxidation of hydrogen gas that is produced into water so that's the role of mno2 so hence at cathode there is a reduction reaction happening of ammonium ions along with that hydrogen gas which is produced it has been oxidized to water so if you look into the reactions anode anode is zinc container it undergoes oxidation to give you two electrons the two electrons moves to your carbon rod that is nothing but your graphite rod the ammonium ions of the electrolyte that is present in the electrolyte they accept two electrons they produce two products ammonia and hydrogen gas since hydrogen gas uh, is not required inside the battery uh, it, it hinders the efficiency of the battery this hydrogen gas produced in this reaction has been oxidized by mno2 to h2o so that's your reaction at cathode the overall reaction if you look into it so by cancelling the two electrons on the left side and the right hand side this is the overall reaction of your dry cell so this is how the reaction that is the electric current passes from your zinc container into graphite rod hence the graphite rod has a brass cap which is been producing your electricity to your 
uh, outer circuit that being uh, that is in your electrical gadgets or nothing but uh, your batteries or your uh, clocks or something which will be used so like this by happening this chemical reaction you'll be producing your chemical in that is electrical energy from the chemical energy but remember these two reactions which we have taken at anode or cathode they are irreversible that is the zinc once oxidized it is completely oxidized once the ammonium ions that has been reduced once it is reduced it is reduced they are irreversible hence electrical energy cannot be utilized to recharge this batteries once the batteries charge that is electrical energy production is over it is completely dead that is it is your use and throw battery the other primary battery is your mercury cells as i have told you you have seen the coin like batteries that is present in your wrist watches etc uh, your calculators etc that is nothing but your mercury cells so the picture of pictorial representation of mercury cell is here you can observe that it is also a zinc container it is also a small zinc container the container walls acts as your anode into which you have dipped a graphite rod again a small graphite rod which acts as your cathode you can also call it as in some textbook you can also see it as carbon rod it is nothing but your graphite rod so it acts as your cathode this graphite rod has been dipped in a paste of mercury oxide and potassium hydroxide the potassium hydroxide acts as an electrolyte so it has been dipped inside this the whole thing has been sealed the whole thing has been sealed again the uh, one thing i forgot it that is the cathode and anode are here also separated by a porous paper so i have written already porous paper of separation that separates your cathode from anode also this porous paper acts as your uh, salt bridge this whole thing has been sealed so it acts as your mercury cell once again repeating a large container of zinc acts as your anode into which you have dipped a graphite rod acts as cathode graphite rod has been dipped into a paste of mercury oxide and koh koh acts as your strong electrolyte it is a very strong electrolyte then uh, the anode and cathode has been separated by a porous plate so porous paper the porous paper acts as your salt bridge the whole setup has been sealed coming to the reaction what happens to the reaction again the zinc that is your uh, uh, anode the container zinc container inner walls of the zinc container undergoes oxidation zinc undergoes oxidation by removal of electrons it gives electrons it undergoes itself oxidation these two electrons move towards your graphite rod that is nothing but your cathode nearby the graphite rod koh and hgo is present that is mercury oxide and potassium hydroxide is present wherein mercury oxide undergoes reduction you can observe here the mercury oxide has been undergoing reduction if you observe this is plus 2 oxidation of here it is plus 2 and here it is zero that is reduction is happening for your mercury mercury is undergoing reduction while here you can observe zinc is zero here it is plus 2 here it is oxidation happening here it is reduction reaction happening so hence the two electrons that is being given by your anode that is zinc container but by itself undergoing oxidation arrives to your a uh, cathode that is your graphite rod near your graphite rod the graphite rod along uh, the sides which is having uh, mercury oxide the mercury oxide accepts those electrons accepts those electrons coming from your anode and itself undergoes reduction as a result there is a redox reaction you can observe here the overall cell reaction is a redox reaction wherein zinc undergoes oxidation mercury undergoes reduction hence they produce your electrical energy the emf of the cell is emf of this mercury cell is 1.35 volts that is all along its lifetime it produces a constant current of constant voltage of 1.35 volts so this is about your mercury cell in both the cells the very important thing is your reaction at anode and cathode you have to look into it they'll be giving write the anodic reaction of your mercury cell write the cathodic reaction of your uh, dry cell so anodic and cathodic reactions are very important the other thing i have to tell you both in mercury cell as well dry cell there are lot of reaction happening that is the reaction is so complex so hence i have written the just gist of this reactions so the anodic reactions are there are 10 reactions the gist of this reaction is this one so the reaction inside these batteries are very complex to explain detail hence i have written the overall reactions at anode and overall reaction at cathode and the overall reaction of the cell 
Hence, it is very important to know the reaction at anode and cathode. More than your diagrammatic representation of the cell, you have to look into, you have to concentrate on the reactions that is happening at anode and cathode, both in your dry cell as well as your mercury cell. It will be asked for one marks, write the reactions at anode and cathode of respective batteries or cells.